All right, good day, guys. Welcome back to another episode. Today we have a hundred liters of fuel on board, and we're just going to go that way into the distance, straight out into blue water, and see what we can come across: dolphins, whales, tuna, kingfish, workups, whatever we find. We're just going to go explore. But either way, I'm sure we'll see something exciting. So stick around. Let's get out there. It's awesome to see, it's a good start for the morning. Never get sick of seeing that. Yeah. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear that on the video, but I can actually hear them calling through the boat. Just look how many there are. <laughs> look at them all. Man, that is epic. See, look at him chasing the other one. Having a scratch. I'm not sure how much more dolphin footage I need, but uh, I might turn the camera off and just enjoy them for a bit. I know I said no more dolphin footage, guys, but look, there's a white one there. It's crazy. I've only ever seen a white dolphin once before, actually, it was in the sound, so probably not that far away from here and could potentially be the same fish. It looks like a whole bunch of bird action just up ahead, so I might chuck the lures in here and see how we go. Alright, so just gonna make a quick Sammy. If you haven't seen my last video, go and check it out just to show you how to make this bottled tuna. Um, this is from the last time I was out here. And this is just an absolutely awesome way of keeping your fish. It just adds to your uh, culinary, culinary variety. Yeah. So I just want to show you guys a new product um, that I've been working on. I call it the multi-tool. Um, you can use it at icky fish. You can use it for untightening screws, tightening bolts and stuff. And also as a knife when you want to make a sandwich. So if you want, you can get one of these. I'll... Um, I'll put a link in the description below of where to buy them. You get a set of about 10, and um, they're a great multi-tool. Really, really useful. Well, the multi-tool strikes again. One of the other many purposes of the multi-tool is uh, autopilot. Jam it in behind the wheel, stop the wheel turning when you're cruising, keeps you in a straight line. Sure. We're hooked up. We've got one on the back of the rod and another one on this hand line here. So I'm just going to keep the way on and keep the tension on that hand line while I reel this one in. Yep, car wire. Pilot on. I'll deal to these fish. Actually, no, I need the autopilot to activate. Oh well, just car wire, but still some action nonetheless. guys so there wasn't much happening out wide so i've come in close to this spot here and i'm going to hop in see if we can find some kingfish um got a couple of car wire out wide but no tuna hanging around today heaps of dolphins and still a beautiful day out there and 
chasing tuna it's one of those things you know if you don't go you won't know and um that was the case today it wasn't there but i had to find out somehow anyway i'm going to get in the drink see if i can find some fish here hopefully i can redeem myself So after a couple of drops I found this nice ledge that you can see in front of me and decided it was a perfect opportunity to belly up some of these kahawai and try and awaken some demons. Things started to turn on a bit and there's a couple of big schools of kawai came in to check it out. Made a few drops in the hopes of seeing a kingfish but those drops were pretty uneventful and didn't see any kingfish this day which is really surprising. Clean warm blue water, lots of bait fish but yeah no kingfish this time. So I put the burley down in front of this ledge and just spent some time sussing it out before I moved off and let the burley do its thing. And straight away there was an eagle ray on it and this John Dory came in. So I would have a crack at him. I thought I'd give it a crack, pretty confident in my shot, and bloody missed it. You look back and you see the recoil on the gun, and I think there was a combination of poor form, and also I just replaced the spear, if you remember one of the last videos, I broke the tip of my spear shooting another John Dory, and when I replaced it, I went up a millimetre in thickness, so that in combination with the notches being further back on the spear, I think it's just overstretching the rubbers and creating that extra recoil when I fly the gun. All right, so just hopping out for a break. Gonna have a drink of water. Um, I was bellied up a couple of car wire just then, hopefully bringing in the kingfish. No kingfish came in, lots of bait fish, and then a massive John Dory came in, probably one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. So I did a few more drops on him, trying to get him, and then on the last couple, I saw some big snapper hanging around with him. So it was really good to see. I'm just gonna give them 20 minutes or so to try and come closer to that ledge where that burley is and hopefully I can nail one, but man, it's a hard decision. Do I shoot the Johnny or the snapper? After a bit of a break on the surface and some water, I jumped back into the water to have another crack at this snapper. I'd be pretty keen to hear from you guys what fish you would have went for in this situation. So feel free to drop a comment in the section below and let me know what fish and why. Now, as you can see, and you've probably seen in my other videos, Tasman Bay has a severe lack of seaweed, algae, so you've really got to use the rocks, crevices, shadows, cracks as camouflage because you don't have the luxury of using the kelp to do so. With that in mind, the topography in this area created the perfect spot for doing what I'm doing. 
it was a nice approach angle there was lots of cracks lots of shadows and it meant that i could get down to the bottom before the fish had an opportunity to see me using these big rocks and gullies as cover once i'm down on the bottom there was a nice ledge that gave me a good vantage point to hop, look over and approach from above um, which is kind of the blind spot of snapper and hopefully get close enough to put a spear in one there's a few small fish showing up now so it's a good sign just got to wait a bit longer Once again, using these cracks to slide my way down, rather than just bombing straight down on top of them, it allows me to approach from further back, further away from the fish without risk of anyone seeing me. This one you can see there was some nice big snapper hanging out on that burley. I was about to go for the shot on one, but decided I'd just wait a bit longer and see if anything else showed up, so I pulled back and spotted that John Dory again. The fish were dragging the burley around a bit and it meant that the snapper were moving so I had to keep track of where they were going and I just spotted this one come out from this ledge right underneath me and I think it saw me, so I just backed off really slowly and gave it another kick. You can see when I'm exiting the approach, I'm swimming away as well as up and using these cracks as camouflage on the way out as well as on the way in. Knowing where the snapper were and knowing they were in range, I went up to that same drop off and nailed one. You can actually see the fish in front was a bit bigger and in hindsight I probably should have gone for that but at the time I just wanted to get one, get on the board because shooting a fish like this is a challenge and an achievement. Super hard work they aren't buggered and all that for one fish. Oh, there was about six six fish about this size and a big John Dory about the same size as these guys. And they were just feeding hard on the burley that I put down. It took me so many attempts to get up close to them to try and get, get a shot. And they kept moving around and oh man, what a challenge. Just had to be patient, stay quiet, camouflage. And boom, gotcha. I'm stoked with that. You! <laughs> All right, so we're just going to cook up some snapper from the other day. Um, we're going to make some spicy fried snapper burgers. So 
we got our um, paddies here. Got our oil heating up. And our bed. And the bed set up. <laughs> We're going to stay in here tonight, but that's another episode, so keep your eyes peeled for that one. Um, we've got our bed set up, but we'll show you more of that in the next episode after this one. So stay tuned, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and turn on the notifications, and YouTube will let you know when that one drops. For now, we're going to cook this snapper. Snapper patties from the other day, cucumber, some lettuce. We've got eggs. There's a seasoning. We crack an egg in there. Who wants to do that? Me. Me. So we're just beating up the egg. Maybe a bit thinner. Not so thick. Decent amount uh, of oil. <laughs> Try not to spare it everywhere. Decent amount of oil. Dip our fillets and the egg whites into the flour and do that about three times to build up that coating. This flour mix has um, chili, garlic, more chili, and <laughs> paprika and flour. Garlic, more chili, yeah. paprika, and garlic. Dipping into the flour, flip it, dip and flip, yep, and then put it into the egg, dip and flip, yep, and then back into the flour, and then back into the egg. And back into the flour? Yep. <laughs> And again, flip. Yeah, and again, flip. Yeah, and then put it on the chopping board. One fish. Yeah. All right, so our oil's just about hot enough. We're going to chuck these fillets in, get these cooked up. As the egg soaks through, you want to keep dropping it through the flour. Builds up that coating, makes it extra crunchy. Oh yeah, look at that. Chuck it in and lay away. And lay away. Is that different? That's different, yeah. It's important to layer it up because that's how you build up that coating. The more layers the better, but obviously you start chewing through your mixtures. So we just did, what, three layers? We did three layers because we only had limited egg and limited flour. But if you're at home, go for gold. Just going to give the kids theirs while they wait because they'll be impatient. Patty. Cucumber. Bit of greens. Yummy greens! That's so nice. Here you go, guys. Southern fried snapper burger. Absolutely delicious. Let's give the kids a go. You sit down, Amira. I'll get yours. Yum. Tell me how it is. You good? Crunchy? Yeah. Spicy? No. Need more chili. Good? Yeah. <laughs> my one's nearly done. Alright, my turn. Here we go, guys. Crispy fried snapper burger. Let's have a crack. Oh, mm. that was delicious. Ooh. What? No feet! Ooh. Maybe I'll get my feet off the dinner table. <laughs> Alright guys, that's it for this one. We're going to sit here and finish our lunch. Um, thanks for watching. If you liked it, hit the like button. And hopefully we'll see you in the next one, which we'll be carrying on from this one which would be another catch and cook, which would be dinner tonight. So thanks for watching guys. Catch you later.